Max Roll, great website. They are definitely the go-to, I would say, especially for last epoch when it comes to having a solid understanding of just class performance, how each class is supposed to be played, what things to look out for, guidelines, if you will. What Max Roll can't help you with is the gearing process though. And the reason why is because in Last Epoch, there are too many random variables involved. If I take a look at my gear here, you're gonna see this Katana of Acid. It has melee damage, critical strike multiplier here as the affi or excuse me, the implicits that's built into the weapon to the katana. All katanas are going well, all one-handed katanas are going to be melee damage, critical strike multiplier. That's what you see at the very top. That's what we call implicits in this game. Then you have your prefixes and suffixes. We just call these affixes. That's a little bit more specific. And those four affixes right there, these things are always changing. Of course, the implicits are changing with the type of item that you get. Uh, a sword, a katana, dagger, all these items are going to have different implicits. But when it comes to the actual affixes, they also are always changing. Now, the issue, and this extends beyond just last epoch is that gearing and stat priority is not one dimensional meaning you're not just full sending everything into damage or a defense stat and then calling it a day it's not like that in this game you need to really make sure you pick up multiple stats so for example your resistances your crit avoidance all these different things you're going to have to pick up but you can pick them up in a lot of different ways. You can pick them up in your, your you can pick them up in your passive tree. You can pick them up in your skill trees. You can pick them up in your idols, your in your gear, obviously. And in order to properly gear out your character and to have a better experience in time playing this game, you are going to need to understand this system the basic system you're going to need to understand what stats to look out for what's important what's not important and if you can do that your your experience will just obviously be better and your character will blast much more effectively i'm essentially teaching you how to fish rather than giving you the fish itself because i assure you your experience and performance is just going to be drastically better if you understand what i'm about to tell you it certainly did for me as i just recently competed in the race to level 100 hardcore solo self found i was able to finish as the number one ranked play dancer overall fourth across the entire tournament and i only had a week prior just over a week prior to the launch to really learn this game so obviously there is a there's a big learning curve for me and that extended through the actual event itself i had to really be careful with how i was gearing my character because when you do hardcore especially during a race you're trying to move as fast as possible but you also need to be geared properly otherwise you might get one shot and the biggest thing that i learned from that was that there is no one way. And if you really want to min-max your character, you're going to have to min-max based off of what you have. Because you can't sit there and spec around a chase item that may never come for the first 100 levels. I was uniqueless uh, throughout my throughout 99% of my journey straight up like I don't I didn't get this smoke weaver I did well, this is this smoke weaver is the only unique that I used in my build and I didn't even get this until I, I I'd have to double check, but maybe my last couple of levels. Okay, so <laughs> you need to make do with what you have, and that's what we're going to be talking about here now. I am going to try and keep this as general as possible, so everything I tell you in this video is essentially going to be the general rule of thumb for all classes, and we're going to start with damage first. You have added damage and increased damage, so essentially flat damage or added damage, and then you have increased damage, which is going to come in the in a percentage form. So you can see here, 81% increased melee. This is plus nine flat throwing damage. Most people are going to tell you that the flat damage is prioritized simply because of how damage is calculated in this game. You have flat damage, and that gets multiplied to your increased damage. Uh, so obviously if I have 81% uh, 
melee damage here. Let's say I have another piece that gives me 19% increased melee damage. That's going to be 100%. That's multiplied by the base damage. This is throwing. So let's just pretend this plus nine melee damage. Plus nine melee damage gets added up together. Let's say I have plus nine here and then another plus 11 melee damage somewhere else. That's plus 20 melee damage. Again, just pretend it. I know it says throwing. Pretend it's, it says melee. Uh, then that's going to be 20. So that 20 then gets multiplied to all of the other um, increased damage multipliers that are within the same bucket. So um, if you understand how damage formulas work in ARPGs in general, you will already know what I'm talking about. If you don't and you don't really care, don't worry about it. Flat damage, typically better than uh, increased damage. And I say typically because it will, to a certain degree, depend on your build and what uh, stats that you have access to. For example, if my increased damage, as you can see here with throwing damage, is a relatively low number, and I have a lot of flat damage across the board, but my multipliers uh, or my bucket multipliers are relatively low, then there are instances where you definitely do want to increase or prioritize the increased damage over flat damage. There can be instances like that. I, I don't know how many of those exist simply because I've only played Blade Dancer, but I'm just saying mathematically, logically thinking, that can certainly be the case so just keep that in mind general rule of thumb though stack that base damage as much as possible both stats are are very very important another offensive stat that you want to look out for are your skill specific uh affixes in my case with this class physical penetration with shadow daggers this is not going to be the same for every single class shadow daggers is what my get what my build is designed around and this happens to be the affix that is or the affix or effect that is in the game for shadow daggers so this is obviously also class specific check to see which class specific affix is available and in my case these affixes are available only on the helmet slot and the chest slot as well as your idols so obviously i'm going to want to prioritize having this specific affix on these two pieces of gear speaking of penetration you also have stats like penetration and shred i could try and look it up here which are also very valuable offensive stats as you can see this item gives me a 16 percent chance to shred armor on melee hit i also have a 174 percent chance to shred on melee hit on my currently equipped katana this is another really good offensive stat that you want to look out for. And the last stat that you want to look out for, for sure, is the critical strike multiplier and, of course, crit, crit chance. Personally, for me, I don't stack crit because I build around shadow daggers. Shadow daggers is a guaranteed crit. So obviously, if you have a skill that has guaranteed crit or if you can pick up crit uh, in your skill tree or in other areas, if it's assuming that that is efficient, uh, you would if you can do that you wouldn't obviously spec into crit if you can't you obviously want crit crit multiplier crit strike multiplier is just crit damage that's what it is you definitely want to stack this because it's within its own damage bucket it's going to be multiplicative to all other damage formulas so you want to try and stack this as much as possible and that's pretty much it so when it comes to damage you have your uh you have your flat damage and increased damage you have your uh, skill damage, whatever that may be. In my case, it's uh, skill pe physical penetration with shadow daggers. I've got that. I've got my shred slash pen penetration stats. And finally, I have critical strike multiplier crit slash crit damage. Okay. Not in any particular order, but those are, those are the five damage affixes that I would certainly look out for and continue to try and stack. Next, we're going to be talking about the defenses, and this is where it gets a little bit more convoluted, especially if you're playing hardcore, because this is the area that you, you really want to actually prioritize in. And all the stats that I'm about to tell you are stats that you can obviously get in your gear as affixes, but you can also get them in other areas too, starting with the resistances. Resistances, hands down, you got to have them all at 75% across the board, unless you're absolutely sure you're only going to stay in a specific monolith and you're absolutely sure 
that that monolith doesn't contain any mobs that deal let's say light any threatening mobs i should say that contains let's say lightning damage so then is it okay to not stack this sure but you better make sure <laughs> that there are no lightning and I don't know if that's possible because it seems like every monolith there certainly are mobs that are more consistent to a certain element but I think there's still a certain level of RNG pitting you against all of the damage types but for example the monolith that I was pushing for hardcore it was primarily void damage and I wanted to stack not only stack it at 75% but as someone that plays hardcore, I wanted to overstack it because there is something called penetration. And I believe mobs can have a maximum uh, mobs or bosses uh, enemies can have up to 15 percent penetration, which is why I overcapped it uh, past 75. But general generally, you just want to get this at least the 75 across the board. And this itself is going to be probably one of the biggest. I don't want to say issues, but uh, variables that you're going to just have to deal with throughout the entire campaign simply because these are constantly changing you can get them as implicits this gives me cold resistance as an implicit i can get them as uh i can have elemental resistance which gives me fire lightning and cold those three right that would be obviously better than just 24 percent fire resistance because this gives me resistance across the board with that generally lower though um and you could also get poison through your vitality stats so th there's a lot to this and i'm not going to sit here and tell you exactly where to pick up each individual stat but just know that they're mainly coming from your affixes or implicits and they're coming from your idols okay as you can see here i've picked up 16 percent void resistance here to make sure i've got that they also come from come from your blessings which are buffs that you unlock after completing a uh after completing a monolith and as you can see with this one i get 28 percent lightning resistance here so resistance is really really important you want to make sure you've got all these at 75 percent if you replace a piece of gear simply because let's say i let's say i get this item th this item right here and i'm like hey I got a better piece of I, I got better boots that I'm gonna replace this with then I've got to sit here and, and consider am I when it comes to the the, the resistances can I afford to lose 14% elemental resistance in this case it will put me at 74 with fire not bad lightning 73 not bad cold ooh 54% I'm gonna have to pick up 20% cold resist from somewhere maybe it needs to be in my idols maybe it needs to be in my belt whatever it may be i need to pick that up so i may not want to upgrade into my next pair of boots until i know i can pick that up or unless i absolutely know i'm not fighting anything that has cold damage resistance is really important the next thing that you really want to prioritize is your health there's a few different health stats as you can see here we'll go back to this one you have the plus 15 health that's flat health and you also have a percentage health three percent increase and then in this case you have a combination of the two the combination of the two is called hybrid health that is hands down the best health stat that you can get however those are very rare so essentially flat health percentage health and then both obviously both being better uh, percentage health scales better so you want to prioritize the percentage health here health is really 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 important so you want to go percentage flat and you could also pick up these in your idols generally most classes are picking up as much health in their idols as possible as you can see i've gone percentage health as the main priority on almost every single piece i had to give up some health here simply because i needed void resistance which allows me to prioritize the avoid resistance excuse me health a little bit more on my affixes here now if i didn't have sorry if i didn't have these void resistance idols and i had more health idols can i just use the health idols and pick up the void resist um from my affixes instead of health yes you can don't be set on i have to get my res uh, my my health from my, my idols uh, my my 
by resistances from idols you don't need to be set on that you're always going to just adapt based off of what you currently have next we have armor dodge block ward i'm just going to categorize this as it's in its own section here as under additional defenses ward is a little bit more in line with health because it's essentially your shield but the other stats really depend on outside of armor of course it really depends on your your class your build my build my class i have a lot of survivability from dodge when i put my smoke bomb up i have this goes up to like to be something like 60 or like or somewhere around 60 percent i can't remember exactly i have to double check but i have a lot of dodge and there are diminishing returns to some of these stats for example dodge and armor but again keep in mind ignore dodge ignore armor or penetration rather as they call it in this game so keep that in mind as well these are also stats that you definitely want to prioritize armor for every class and then dodge ward um block whatever that may be depending on the class that you're playing the last two stats that i want to mention is your endurance and your glancing that is right here and that is right here chance to receive glancing blow endurance is how much damage reduction you get once you get to a certain threshold i think default is around 30 percent it says right here for example if you have 50 percent endurance at an at a at an endurance threshold of 11 of, of 100 all damage dealt to you for your last 100 health will be reduced by 50 percent pretty self-explanatory that also includes one shot mechanics so if i have 100 health and i take 100 damage um and let's say it's my last 30 percent at 30 health for my last 30 health i'm going to take 15 damage 50 percent damage reduction assuming my endurance is at 50 percent in this case okay the endurance threshold is what raises that bar. I believe the base is the default base is 30% of your HP pool, and that goes up as you add stats to it. For me as a hardcore player, I actually put a little bit more prio into this endurance uh, and endurance threshold. As you can see, this helmet here, I have 129 endurance threshold that raises that bar up a little bit more and this gives me a much tankier character because now i have almost half of my hp bar taking i'm, I'm taking 55 percent less damage for ha almost half of my hp bar that makes me just a lot tankier right so um endurance i think is also very important um when it comes to especially hardcore pushes and glancing blow as well this is something that i have a, a lot of access to specifically as a rogue i don't i'm not sure about other classes however glancing blow gives me a chance to just take a flat 35 percent less damage and as you have these flat damage reduction uh, multipliers being added it really helps your overall survivability quite a bit quite a bit so this is also something i would look out for however this is also a stat glancing blow specifically that i wouldn't really re i don't even actually it's I, I don't believe it's an actual affix that you can get um and i don't think it's an idol that you can get either from my understanding i get my glancing blow strictly from the, my skill tree but you guys can double check um on that I'm, I'm i'm quite certain there is no affix for glancing blow but i do want to mention that and of course overall just flat damage reduction is go going to be uh the number one overall priority and this is going to be um unique to each individual class as you can see right here this um this that right here um here here we go evasion gives me at max at max evasion five out of five it gives me a flat 20 percent damage reduction while i'm moving and considering i'm always moving with my build this gives me 20 percent damage reduction across the board then i've got my 55 percent from endurance and these just begin to add up and of course there are uh more instances of damage reduction that you can get and that's going to vary depending on the class that you play damage reduction definitely prio oh and i almost forgot this is also extremely important your critical strike avoidance you can see that i have mine at 105 percent this means i cannot be crit and there is no penetration for this so i just cannot be crit once you get to 100 you don't need to stack any more of this i cannot be crit that is going to be very good if 
you do not want to go avoidance or if you have a piece of gear that has reduced damage from crits and give and also gives like a, an additional stat or something i'm not sure if i have that with any of my gear pieces right now uh right here i have it on my boots 24 armor and eight percent reduced bonus damage taken from critical strikes this is obviously worthless for me outside of the 24 plus armor that i have on these boots uh simply because i cannot be crit because i went into crit strike avoidance but uh and i'm not going to go into why i have that piece of gear but it's this this is kind of the point that i'm making with this whole video you're not going to have perfect affixes if you don't have perfect affixes you're going to have to make adjustments and in, in order to make adjustments you're going to need to understand the system right so uh crit, crit strike avoidance very important the alternative to that is to stack reduced bonus damage taken from critical strikes uh which also come with added stats like like armor in this case so let's just recap this real quick you want to prioritize your resistances you can get these through your idols and blessings your health stats which you want to prioritize hybrid health which is percentage and flat over the percentage over the flat hp you want to then also prioritize getting either uh, you want to prioritize getting armor and either dodge block ward or all of the above depending on your build uh, the next one is crit critical strike avoid or damage taken from crits and the last one being endurance and glancing just so you know when it comes to endurance as well most people do not actually try to go out of their way to get those affixes uh, additionally however for me going hardcore on a rogue i wanted more survivability and i felt i found a lot of value in going endurance especially because my build i was juicing damage and it was okay for me to do so so that's going to depend on your play style but those will be those are definitely the main defensive stats to look out for when gearing your character the last section are it's going to be like a miscellaneous section okay and that first one is going to be leached uh, uh leached damage so as you can see right here nine percent of melee damage leached as health leeching hp is a very 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 good way to sustain you can leech dots which allow you to leech on each tick you can leech hits you can leech kills uh generally speaking 12 health on kill this is a worthless affix you don't want to use that you don't want to prioritize that when it comes to leeching um leeching as health just based off of the damage or hits is always going to be better so uh damage leech and you can also get this in your skill tree for example in my uh or in my passive tree i have stats like for example here that gives me additional leech so you might not need as much leech this really on, on your gear affixes this really depends on your class that you're playing uh, but i do have it picked up in mind and leech is also like one of if not the most important or advantageous stat in the very very early game like the first 20 or 30 levels or so i will say the other stat obviously movement speed this goes without saying there's a lot of damage you will be mitigating simply by moving out of the way that goes without saying also a lot of the one shot mechanics is uh also a lot of the one shot mechanics come from just standing in a telegraph right and if you can move faster you can survive better so movement speed also super super important for all classes and the last thing is your main attribute stat and you're gonna see right here in the character stat sheet vitality strength dex intelligent attunement uh, every class will have their damage scaled off of one of these stats in my case my damage can be scaled off of dexterity and going into dexterity it also gives me dodge rating which i am stacking in my build as well it synergizes as well i have also gone points into strength because not only does strength give me armor but excuse me um uh, strength gives me armor but i've also put points into vitality because vitality not only gives me health flat health but it also actually gives me poison and necrotic resistance so elemental resistance physical void and then poison and necrotic excuse me you can pick up through vitality as well and i can also pick up some poison through my uh passives right here excuse me uh this passive right here gives me dodge rating and five percent poison resistance 
per. And as you can see, I've gone seven points into this. And this is something that Max Roll, I believe, did not recommend me doing. Well, they didn't deliberately say don't do this, but they didn't have this in their build simply because there are better options. But given my gear set up with what I have available to me and I'm not in a position where I can die, I simply did not have enough poison resistance to get to that cap. So I picked up additional poison resistance, 5% per, I believe, by investing into this tree right here. So I was able to do this simply because I have a better, I have a better understanding of, of the stat priority, right? So it's I'm not throwing by putting points into this. Max roll is also not wrong for not recommending this stat point. The reality is I want to reach certain benchmarks, which is 75%, and I'm losing poison resistance somewhere else. Let's say on Max Rule's website, they're getting 75% poison resistance, but if they're getting in an it if they are getting that in an affix somewhere, that's an additional affix that I'm putting towards something else. So there really is no perfect right or wrong way because everything is just there's just so many variables right outside of that the only two other stats that are notable and these two really depend on the build would be mana recovery and cooldown recovery obviously if i'm just dealing damage via umbral blades and there's nothing else then i don't really need to spec into cooldown recovery umbral blades synchronized strike yes is it going to help with smoke bomb and shift my movement of course it will but damage wise it's not going to really help versus some other classes it will really help especially like let's say falconer where you have cooldowns on your falcon skills right so that's something to consider another thing to consider is how mana deprived you are umbral blades doesn't cost any mana six is nothing synchronized strike costs 77 it's a lot but this is also a lot of damage so my build specifically i want mana regen as you can see, I get 16% increased mana regen from this uh, from this relic here. So mana recovery, cooldown recovery, these two stats are also very important. Uh, but it's not a jet, it's not a stat that every class needs to be taken, taking, but some classes definitely need to make it a priority. So when it comes to the other stats that you need to look out for, leech, your main attribute stat, movement speed, and mana recovery slash cooldown recovery let me know what you guys think in the comment section below don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and come hang out with me on twitch if you have any further questions or a specific question to your build i'm streaming this game right now almost every single day and i'm having a blast i'm looking forward to trying out new specs min maxing and when it comes to youtube content in the next week, I'm going to be posting some more guide videos when it comes to builds specifically, uh, starting with my hardcore Blade Dancer build. I'm pretty excited to uh, to get into that one. So yeah, like and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video. Boy,